And what about um, alternatives like exercise, diet, sleep? Are these essential? Yes, sleep is uh, very important and uh, in two ways. One, if you sleep more than about 10 hours a day, there's no benefit, no, uh, no uh, sign that this actually benefits you. And in fact, it probably makes your life uh, somewhat worse. Uh, and uh, below about six hours a day is not good enough either. So we have to find a happy medium for everybody. And sometimes this can involve sedative sleeping pills. Sometimes it can involve other interventions. Uh, so sleep is very important. Uh, we uh, put the accent on exercise for a number of reasons. This is a harder one to do because not everybody, even in the general population, is uh, geared to do exercise in a very uh, active way. But most of the time we just recommend to people to walk at least 30 minutes a day uh, at a brisk walk, enough to get a little bit breathless, not enough to get exhausted, and just enough to get breathless, come, come home and sit down a bit. And if one does that, you know, every day or at least three or four times a week, that's good enough. We encourage people to take the stairs because that also uh, is a little bit of cardiovascular exercise. The exact effect on the brain is not completely clear. I mean, we have our ideas that somehow endorphins are secreted or what have you, but um, uh, it's hard to demonstrate that really. The benefits appear to be there. Uh, however, not just for the, the, the uh, psychological well-being, but obviously also for the physical well-being. Uh, there are efforts as well in that uh, vein uh, to try and lose weight if one has gained weight rel relative to either medicine or inactivity. Uh, smoking is a big problem with people with psychotic illness uh, and uh, we encourage people not to smoke if we can and we do have active non-smoking uh, interventions for people uh, like that as well. Uh, the other thing uh, in terms of diet um, it, this is a very hard one because many people with psychotic illness uh, are also uh, plagued by poverty uh, because they're not able to work necessarily and they live on social assistance and uh, it, it sometimes takes a lot of effort to find a healthy diet that they can afford, that they can prepare relatively easily um, that uh, takes into account the fact they might not have a lot of mental energy to prepare their, their food and so on because of negative symptoms of their illness and or maybe active psychotic cell symptoms. So it, it's a diet is a tougher one. Uh, we do encourage people to um, uh, eat as much as possible a Mediterranean type of diet, you know, uh, less meat, uh, more fish, uh, you know, uh, phytonutrients, you know, broccoli and things like that. Uh, this is another interesting area of uh, of uh, treatment, which is a little bit, uh, the door is just opening on this, called um, you know, the oxidative stress model of illness, which uh, we know um, can affect all of us in the community and is related to aging in most of us, but can also make living with psychotic illness much more difficult. So what can one do for oxidative stress? Well, the phytochemicals, broccoli, turmeric, and some other things that uh, people can, you know, they're well, well known in, the, in terms of dietary interventions. Um, the uh, taking of certain uh, supplements, if one can't, af can't afford or doesn't like things like omega-3 fatty acids uh, appropriately. Uh, we do have some people with very resistant uh, psychotic illness where we do uh, advocate the use of uh, vitamin uh, treatments as adjunct treatments of uh, vitamin D3, which is not particularly um, noted for psychosis, more for mood disorders perhaps, but uh, also um, high dose of vitamin uh, B3 or niacin in people that can tolerate it. Sometimes that can help to a certain degree in people that have very uh, ultra-resistant illness, but it's uh, not a treatment on its own.